Welcome to day two of Spring 1 2021. I hope you were able to join us for the main stage yesterday when we looked at unlocking developer creativity. If you missed any of those great talks, you can catch all the recordings on spring1.io on September 7th. Before we get to today's festivities, we need to take care of some light housekeeping. First, be sure to come hang out with the other attendees and speakers in our Slack workspace at spring1.slack.com. The chatter is good and the GIFs are plentiful. Also, just a reminder that closed captioning is available throughout all of our main stage talks. You can toggle it on or off from the settings in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. Lastly, we wanna know how your Spring One experience has been. We'll share the link to our post-event survey on Slack and over email, and we'd appreciate any feedback you have to offer. With that out of the way, let's get started. Yesterday's main stage talks were about getting into the state of flow and making new patterns accessible to developers. This morning is all about connecting that developer experience to production. I'm excited to invite VMware CEO Raghu Raghuram to kick things off for day two. Thank you, Tiffany. I'm excited to welcome all of you back for day two of Spring 1 2021. Yesterday, you got to hear from Spring co-founder Jürgen Huller about what's on the horizon in Spring Framework 6 and Spring Boot 3. From native executables to GraphQL, there is a lot to be excited about. And 69% of you are planning to increase your use of Spring Boot in the next two years. You also got to hear about how our work around Spring Cloud Gateway has matured with the addition of an API portal and unpacking what our socket can do for collaborative applications. We are committed to bringing more capabilities to your familiar Spring developer experience. On that note, you heard a lot about what goes into an enjoyable developer experience from the frameworks you're using and beyond. This is something we think about a lot at VMware, connecting the dots from idea to production to power digital transformation. You heard some amazing stories from the Gap and CVS Health who are using Spring and Tanzu Application Service to achieve great outcomes for their business. Tanzu Application Service continues to be the comprehensive turnkey solution to deliver a great developer experience, threaded all the way to production on any cloud. We also know from our latest State of Spring survey that 92% of you would like features to help deploy Spring on Kubernetes. Today, you're gonna to hear more about our vision for building a composable AppAware platform on Kubernetes with Tanzu application platform, as well as observability and much more. So get comfortable and enjoy day two. Thank you, Argu, that was a great recap. As a developer advocate, I love talking about the tools and tech that I think will help make developers' jobs easier and more fun. That's why I'm really excited about the talks Argu mentioned that are coming up. Let's hear more about the developer platform that we're building from the team that's actually building it. Next, we have VMware VP of R&D and Kubernetes co-founder, Craig McLucky. He'll be asking a few important questions starting with how the Spring and Cloud Native ecosystems are coming closer with Tanzu application platform. You'll also hear from Ben Hale, Senior Staff Engineer, and Valentina Alaria, Product Management Director, both part of VMware R&D, who will show us a preview of the developer platform that will make developers' lives so much easier. Take it away, Craig. Yesterday, you heard RJ describe several major inhibitors to developer flow. He also announced the beta of a new offering, VMware Tanzu Application Platform. In the last few years, I've had the pleasure to work on a lot of projects. And as I reflect on my personal journey, I keep coming back to the hardest thing I was ever asked to do. And I hope this resonates with you. When I look back, the hardest challenge I took on personally was running an IT team in a financial services institution. We couldn't separate out building solutions that the business needed to succeed while running those same systems that were ultimately powering the business. Now, fast forward to today, and some things have changed, 
but many have stayed the same. The world may be a little more complex than it was a decade or two ago, but the state of the art has undoubtedly changed. Today, we have a chance to bring together the world of developers and operations in a unique way, and that's really what Tanzu is all about. And looking at this world, there are two technologies that I think will help a lot. And I'm personally thrilled to have an opportunity to work with both of these technologies in both of these communities, Spring and Kubernetes. Now, on the one hand, we have Spring as a technology that is obviously near and dear to you. This is, after all, a Spring conference. At the risk of being a little too geeky, one of the things that has been truly wonderful to observe about Spring is that it brings an inversion of control model to developers that enables that separation of development from operations. This means you don't have to worry about the instantiation, configuration, lifecycle management of the things that you build. You just get to focus on building them. Configuration metadata manages the binding to the production systems you rely on for things like storage and messaging. You can separate build from configuration, instantiation, and the updates of the containers that everything is running in. Now, if you squint at it and think about it a little bit, this facilitates a transition from a world where developers have to create platform-aware applications to a new world where developers are perhaps able to rely on application-aware platforms. And this is really powerful. Developers should be platform aware to get the most out of the environment to some extent, but we shouldn't ask them to write their applications in a way that's entirely tied to that environment. Now, along comes Kubernetes, which offers some pretty useful capabilities in terms of being able to manage the life cycle of containers, the ability to stand up services that can be consumed, and it is actively reshaping the destination environment that organizations are building those applications for. With that transition comes an amazing opportunity to strengthen the Spring experience, simplify operations, but also create value in a world that is ultimately bigger than this wonderful Spring ecosystem. So let's answer three questions. How are we working to bring the vibrant Spring community and the cloud-native ecosystems closer together and solve some real problems with Tanzu application platform? The second question is, what are the implications of all of this work beyond the boundaries of the Spring ecosystem? And then finally, where is this all going? Where is our work going to take us over time? What can we expect in the coming months and years ahead that are really exciting? Tanzu application platform is being built to answer these three questions. So let's start with the first. How do we make Kubernetes Spring aware? And while we're at it, how do we make Kubernetes more intrinsically accessible to you? Well, I don't know how many of you have built Kubernetes-based apps, but one of the key pieces of feedback we get is that it's powerful, but it can be a little inscrutable for folks that haven't grown up with a distributed systems background. The initial experience, that wall of YAML, as we like to say, to configure your first application can be a little bit daunting. And I'm sorry about that. We never really intended folks to interact directly with that subsystem. It's more or less developed a life of its own over time. But this is where the Tanzu application platform comes into the picture. It gives you everything you need to build great applications using modern DevSecOps practices and offers a turnkey way to go from your IDE to a production Kubernetes environment. Before I get into the details, it's important to make one thing clear. We built Tanzu application platform to shine on VMware's infrastructure but our ambition goes well beyond our own technology, and in particular, our own version of Kubernetes, that is Tanzu Kubernetes Grid. The system is designed to work well with any conformant Kubernetes environment like GKE, AKS, EKS, or OpenShift in mind. And we're doing a lot of our work in the upstream community to ensure that everyone can benefit from the innovation that we're driving. For developers just getting started, the Tanzu journey begins with our application accelerators. The idea is to take what you already get from Spring Initializer, but instead of just generating Spring artifacts, produce a whole operating blueprint for your application from a set of well-formed and curated templates and using curated content that maps to the common application patterns we, use, we see you building day in and day out. Getting going should require less figuring things out, and you and your team should be set up from success right from day one. 
Now, you might be asking yourself, okay, well, that's great for day one, but what about day two? That's actually where I spend most of my time. That's where the power of Kubernetes comes in. Tanzu application platform takes the advantages of Kubernetes continuous reconciliation nature and brings it to a very broad ecosystem. It goes well beyond the boundaries of what you typically think of the role of Kubernetes as in terms of container orchestrator and looks at the whole end-to-end -end process of building, integrating, and delivering whole applications. The interface or the contract between the application developer and the operations teams or the operating environment turns up to be a well-defined manifest. This manifest describes both your application, its ultimate infrastructure or service requirements, and most significantly, the workflow the application has to go through and how the automation has to handle the process. So defining this enables automation to take over and create some really powerful outcomes. The system of record for this can be Tanzu itself, or it could simply be a Git repo that you push changes to. All of this choreography happens in a way that is both seamless and transparent to operations teams and should mostly be invisible to developers. When an application has made its way to running in production, a developer can then trigger the whole sequence again and again for application updates. And they can do that by interacting with our UI tools, uh, calling an API, or if they choose to, just set the system up in a way that by simply merging their code into a Git repository, it can trigger this orchestration process. Meanwhile, your security team doesn't have to worry about what kind of mystery meets show up in the containers that your developers download. They can feel good that all the developers are using the same set of trusted container images that meet their compliance requirements. These definitions are based on and can be adapted to meet the specific needs that your application has, not the other way around. So not looking at the environment and trying to fit the application to the environment, but rather looking at what the application needs and setting the environment just right for the application. Another significant benefit of Tanzu application platform is intrinsic observability. We have wired observability capabilities throughout. And this obviously matters to you as you're looking to live with your application and production environment and make sure that you're meeting your operating SLOs. Stepping back a little, we have taken a strong opinions loosely held mindset. Tanzu app platform comes with some specific opinions around what an optimal turnkey system for building modern applications looks like. But we recognize that our opinion may not match your opinion or your company's opinion. So we make allowances for modularity and pluggability. Here's how I think about it. Are you familiar with the term mechanical sympathy? I'm a bit of a car nut, so this really resonates with me. It was coined by the race car driver, Jackie Stewart and essentially says that while a race car driver doesn't have to be a mechanic to drive a car, having some level of understanding of the limitations of its systems and the trade-offs that were made enables them to produce better results. You don't have to understand how something works to use it, but you can get the best possible results if you take the time to learn more about it. Now, for those of you who are Java developers, I think this will really resonate. If you want to get the most out of the runtime environment and really push it to its limits, it helps to understand how everything works under the covers. So if you're a sufficiently expert user of a system like Tanzu Application Platform, you may ask for the reconfiguration of some of the underlying systems to meet your precise needs. Tanzu Application Platform is both opinionated and modular. So if you want to peel back the, the, the layers of abstraction, you can do that all the way down to the Kubernetes API. And if that's not for you, that's fine too. It's up to you and your platform team how many layers you want exposed and which aspects of the emerging platform should be fixed and non-fungible. Okay, Hugh, that's quite a lot to take in. And I think the best way to really understand this is to take a look at the demo and see what this looks like from a developer's perspective. And then I'll go ahead and answer those last two questions. So over to you, Ben and Valentina. Thanks, Craig. You just heard Craig talk about the many critical challenges that application teams face today and the benefits that Tanzo application platform brings to the table. 
Now, Ben and I want to show you in a bit more detail how Tanzu App Platform can help developers and applications operators alike throughout the entire life cycle of an app running on any Kubernetes platform. And by the way, all of this will be available for public beta later this year, but we have working code to give you a sneak peek today. Now let's get started right at the beginning. Let's imagine they're a new developer just starting out. You don't know much about Kubernetes, but you have heard about the infamous wall of YAML. Now, what does it look to get started writing an application on Tanzo application platform? So many of you are familiar with the incredibly popular Spring Initializer that's been used to bootstrap tens of millions of Spring Boot applications over the years. Application Accelerator, available today in beta, brings that same great bootstrapping experience to your company and beyond just Spring Boot. It allows you to choose from a selection of templates, fill in a set of inputs, and quickly have a project to start work with. Accelerators are code and Git repositories and therefore can be any programming language, any markup language, or anything else you'd like to template. You have access to a full library of input types like toggles, tags, and checkboxes. Because they're in source control, accelerators work with the tools you're already familiar with to ensure that your team generates the most up-to-date and secure projects possible. Now that looks great, but can you tell our audience where are these accelerators coming from? So application accelerator comes out of the box with a library for things like Spring and Kubernetes that we've really got a lot of experience with. But really, this is for you. A lot of effort has gone into making the templates look like the thing they're creating, that the template and configuration be declarative, and we hope this makes it approachable for people like your enterprise architects and certainly for individual developers like you. Now, this seems to work pretty well for a brand new project, but what about the day-to-day -day work of a developer? In the past, it's been always quite difficult to get development environments set up properly and even harder to connect to or mock up the services that developers depend on. Now, developing in containers is supposed to give our developers a more controlled environment, but what we hear over and over and over again is that every single time they've tried, it's so much harder to use features like live reload and debugging that they're very familiar and used to. Yeah, for application developers, working with the platform centers around a single Kubernetes resource called the workload. I know, I know, the whole wall of YAML. But here's the thing, Kubernetes is great. It's immensely powerful, amazingly configurable, and has the largest ecosystem this side of Spring itself. If we tried to hide that from you completely, you'd get none of the benefits that it can provide. Instead, we're building the abstraction layers that Kubernetes is missing. We've asked, what are the things that only a developer can know, and how few lines of YAML can we put that into? We think that only a developer can know what kind of application they're writing. Is it a web app, a batch job, or a streaming function? We think only a developer can know where their source code is located, and a bunch of optional things like what services to bind to, what environment variables to set, and how much CPU and memory to allocate. But that's it. No wall of YAML is required to experience all the value that Kubernetes has to offer. Okay, Ben. That still doesn't quite solve the problem that it's so much harder to use the tools that our developers depend on today. How are we going to meet developers where they're at and we know that for them, that's the ID. Yeah, we know that quick iteration loops are key to getting into a good development flow. Working in containers, though, often means making a change, running a build, generating a new Docker image, and waiting around for the JVM to restart. With Tanzu, developers can use their IDE to deploy their local source code to any cluster, whether that's something managed by central IT or even something local like Minikube. You have it go through the on-cluster build and deployment process, and then you enter a live reload cycle. As you change your code, your IDE does an incremental build. We notice the newly compiled classes and stream those into the running container. We also trigger Spring Boot dev tools to quickly reload your application context without restarting the JVM or the container. This results in updates that are quicker than you can alt-tab to see. In this example, we've used Tilt as our dev orchestrator, and we're looking into other dev orchestrators as well. This looks great. Now, what if something happens? You know, how does someone find out what's going on inside the app? Basically, how do they figure out if something wrong is going on? Since debugging starts in the IDE, it's natural to begin there. In this case, Tanzu takes care of a bunch of things. It finds the proper container that your application is currently running in. It manages the port forwarding to gain access to that container. And it connects the IDE's debugging session to the JVM. All of this allows you, the developer, to focus on debugging the problem itself. Well, that wasn't so bad. But a 
and it's great that our developers can use all the tools they're already comfortable with. Now that they're ready for their application to Mars to production though, are there any nasty surprises waiting for them? Will they have to change their tooling? Basically, will things behave differently? Will things behave differently? No way. You commit your code, you push it, and you use the exact same Tanzu apps workload create command that you used for live reload and debugging, just against a different cluster. Your code goes through the exact same process to build, configure, and deploy that it did in your personal cluster. But there is one big difference between personal clusters and production clusters, and that you're generally not going to be able to open live reload and debugging sessions into to their containers. We all know that bugs are gonna make it through though. So we've built Application Live View, also in beta and available for you, to give you visibility into your application as it's running. It collects Spring Boot actuator data from inside the container and renders it live, giving you instant insights into what's going on with your application. I think developers are going to love this. You might remember back when Craig spoke about going from a world of platform-aware apps to the new world, the concept of an app-aware platform. That might have felt a bit abstract to many of us. Now, Ben, do you mind explaining what that means in a bit more details? I'd love to. As we looked at the developer experience earlier, we never really talked about how your code went from source to URL. Your application didn't know about Kubernetes. You didn't use kubectl. The only YAML describes some characteristics of your application, and the platform does all the rest for you. The Tanzu application platform recognizes that not all containers are the same that applications have a life cycle that takes them from source code to URL with a number of stops along the way. That applications that run in those containers have certain characteristics that a platform can leverage to make them run more reliably, expose deeper insights, and more. At the core of this is something we call a supply chain. A supply chain is a choreographer that defines the steps that an application will progress through, but doesn't do any of the work itself. For each workload that it encounters, it creates a set of Kubernetes resources corresponding to the steps in its template. These resources all correspond to other projects within the Kubernetes ecosystem, like Flux for source ingestion, Tekton for testing, Cloud Native Build Packs for builds, the convention service for applying conventions instead of requiring configuration, and finally, Knative for deployment. The best part is that because everything is a Kubernetes resource, it integrates seamlessly with the rest of the ecosystem. That seems amazingly powerful. But what if someone's organization has already made a choice of a specific technology? Can they customize the supply chain? Can they just slot in their favorite tool of choice? Absolutely, they can make changes. Tanzu is an opinionated platform, but we're under no illusions that a single set of opinions, and especially a single set of opinions from us, will fit everyone. The supply chain is designed from the ground up for you to customize it to fit your needs. For example, if you have a large investment in Jenkins, you could replace Tekton. If you prefer Docker files to build packs, you can use Conoco. If your applications run better as deployments than Knative services, you can make that change. You can even add elements into the supply chain like the Gripe image scanner if you wish. And all of this is customizable using Kubernetes resources. I love the flexibility, but it looks like things could get really complex really fast. And I'm pretty sure now everyone in the audience is wondering, will I have to set all of this up just to start using the platform? No way. If you remember right back at the beginning, our application ran without a single bit of configuration or customization. If those defaults work for you, then you can stick with them and never worry about all the choreography being done by the platform. But the moment you decide that you want to make a change, you can, and the entire Kubernetes ecosystem is available to you. That's great. This is really the best of both worlds. There are so many things that excite me about the work that the team is doing in this space, and I'm sure our audience is getting pretty excited as well. Just the simple fact that we're giving you the power of Kubernetes without any of the pain. That's fantastic. Now, before we go, here are some great sessions where you can learn a lot more about Tanzu application platform. We hope you enjoyed them. Also, keep in mind, we will be hitting some key milestones just in time for VMworld. So make sure to check that out as well. I wish we had hours to spend with you all, but we gotta get back to Craig. Thanks, folks. Now, if you will remember at the beginning of this talk, I asked three questions, and I've only answered the first. How do we make Kubernetes more accessible to Spring developers? 
Now let's talk about that second question. What does this mean to the world that's broader than spring? This is where things get really interesting for me. There are some incredible parallels between the dependency injection techniques that exist at the app library level, when you think about spring, taking an application down perspective and the work that's been done in the cloud native computing ecosystem from the infrastructure up perspective. These two worlds meet with Knative and its ability to handle dependency injection through its duct typing model. Knative layers on some really useful capabilities on Kubernetes is available in our Tanzu portfolio through the cloud native runtime extension for any Kubernetes environment and forms the foundation of what we're building with Tanzu application platform. What this means is that Tanzu application platform is built for Spring first, but offers the same power of templated extensions and dependency binding to many different runtimes environments by making addressing and binding to APIs a platform level function. So snapping together a system of many parts using configurable manifests is easy. Now onto that last question, where is this all going? If you step back and look at what we've built with Tanzu application platform, We've created a system that brings the world of Kubernetes with its controller reconciler model, the world of Knative with its scale to zero and deployment activation and binding model, and the vibrant world of Spring with its write once run anywhere ethos together into a well-structured and well-harmonized platform. This unlocks a very interesting future for us all because we now have access to an application web platform that allows optimization and the reduction in operating complexity at a number of different levels. As we enrich the resources that underpin TAP, we will see a world where things like the desired SLO associated with an application can be defined up front and flow to the underlying infrastructure technologies that are hosting the application, where smart controllers can manage things like resource allocations, auto scaling, and other operating functions, and really shift the burden of operations away from operators to intelligent automation. This is shepherding in a new epoch of intent-driven IT that will change the way we operate. My most sincere hope is that as the world embraces these intent-driven models for IT, we will make the lives of folks that have a far harder job than mine easier. That is, building and running the systems that power today's industries. With that, I hope you enjoy the rest of the main stage sessions and the second day of breakout sessions. We've got a lot more content for folks who are new to Spring, experts in Spring, Kubernetes curious, and more. Look out for more to come on the Tanzu application platform, and please do give the beta a try. Thank you. I must say, not needing a wall of YAML and doing less heavy lifting sounds amazing, as does the concept of having my platform be aware of the apps instead of me needing to write apps that are platform aware. Go check out the public beta for Tanzu application platform when it comes out later this year and see for yourself how it can improve your developer experience. This next story from Voya Financial is exciting because I think their experience will resonate with so many in our community. Following years of mergers and acquisitions, Boy IT was balancing a complicated portfolio of digital properties and tools. After setting out to modernize, their journey took them on a detour in a new direction. Let's welcome lead digital architect, Mike Stevens, and solutions architect, Ruchi Gupta, as they walk us through their ambitious goal of streamlining Voya's transformation. I'm Mike Stevens, Lead Digital Architect at Voya Financial. Voya Financial provides health, wealth, and investment solutions that enable our individual workplace and institutional clients to achieve their financial wellness goals with confidence. Our Wealth Solutions Division is a top five provider of retirement products and services in the US, serving more than 51,000 institutional clients and 6 million individual retirement plan participants. Also, our Health Solutions Division is a leading provider of stop loss and supplemental health insurance in the US. We also provide disability, voluntary insurance products and health savings and spending accounts to businesses covering 6.6 .6 million individuals through the workplace. Our digital modernization journey started in 2018. It became evident that digital capabilities will increasingly define the customer experience of the future. 
Boya recognized the growing imperative to modernize our digital application environment to keep pace with emerging digital technologies and continue to accelerate innovative customer solutions. With a history of mergers and acquisitions, Boya had acquired some redundant and outdated technologies. This created a complex IT digital portfolio, which sparked us to embark on this simplification and modernization journey. Our journey started with a program we call Digital by Design. This program had four main goals. The first was to modernize our workforce by consolidating our vendor relationships and building internal engineering talent, as well as modernizing our agile workspaces in a collaborative environment. Second, we improved on our process agility to gain more flexibility in our releases, create more persistent agile teams, and shorten our overall cycle times from idea to final execution. Third, we modernized our technology by moving our digital applications to VMware Tanzu application service and implementing a modern DevSecOps pipeline. We also greatly enhanced our security, API management, application monitoring, and overall architecture of our applications. Finally, we focused on customer experience. We mobile enabled our applications, made our applications fully accessible, and offered multilingual versions. We enhanced our applications by creating microservices relevant to both participants and planned sponsors. And now I'll hand it over to Ruchi, our solutions architect, who will dive into some of the details of our digital journey. Thank you, Mike. Let's flash back to how we started our journey. Our goals were clear throughout our journey. This was about IT building a modern, scalable application. It was about processes and changing the whole developer experience from how we build to how we deliver a software. We initially focused on our key monoliths that supported our retirement, participants, and plan sponsors. These applications were very stable, but were outdated and carried technical depths. These applications needed support and demand to add features quickly. We started to fully reverse engineer our monoliths and breaking each application into 12 or more microservices. We expected to have a pristine environment with decoupled microservices, decoupled data. IT and business started a great collaboration as we began to re-engineer all business and data access rules. We stood up a platform on four foundations operated by a small, very efficient platform team. We called our platform Intrepid after the warship as we knew we had to be bold and courageous as we took on many different applications, much complexity, and various legacy systems that needed to be fundamentally re-architected to make them cloud-ready. We had a perfect trip to Venice planned. But as many modernizations journey go, along the way we had to rescope the project. Instead of completely rewriting applications, we went through an intensive refactoring process to move those applications to the platform. While we may not have experienced a gondola ride in the canals of Venice or the art of renaissance by completely rewriting our monoliths, there was a great benefit in moving our monoliths to the platform. Instead of Venice, we ended up in Amsterdam, which, while different, is just as beautiful. In our journey to Amsterdam, we also came up with standard guardrails, moved in memory cache to distributed caching, and added an API security. So while few applications were fully modernized to Spring Boot applications, the rest were completely refactored. We were also able to horizontally scale our applications by moving our session state to VMware Tanzu Gemfire. DevSecOps was a critical component in our digital journey. For applications migrated to Tanzu application service, we created DevSecOps pipelines with automation and built-in security that enabled rolling deployments with zero downtime. And we provided a whole new developer's experience for deployment. These changes have greatly improved cycle time and enhanced security and reliability through greater monitoring of our applications. While we deliver resilient and scalable applications, our focus on performance for each API is also so critical. We are very thankful for our leadership to believe in us and this journey. We have been able to achieve incredible results. We have modernized 28 applications and increased our annual releases. And most importantly, this program succeeded in enabling an engineering-focused implementation team and built a sense of excitement in the team. They became more autonomous, enabled by automation, and forged close tie with the business product owners. And we are hiring now, too, if you want to join this great team. 
while our initial planning was crucial, we have learned that being adaptable on our journey is even more important. We have vastly improved the way we develop and run software systems at Voya, and we will continue to iterate and innovate for our customers. We'll share more details about this transformation in our breakout session. So see you all there. Wow, not only did the Voya team build nearly 30 modern and scalable applications that hugely improved their retirement customers' experience, they also did the hard internal work to modernize their developer experience. Voya is a great example of what happens when you give developers the right tools while also empowering and trusting them to align with lines of business. The results, happy customers and employees, and maybe a trip to Amsterdam. Next up, let's talk about observability. Joining us are Yonatan, Marcin, and Tommy, engineers on Spring Observability, and Shivindri, a senior technical writer on Tanzu Observability. So imagine this, you're a developer who's on call and you find out your app is a mess. What do you do to quickly find out what the problem is and help get your business back on track? Well, the actors in this next talk find themselves in exactly that situation. Let's see how they use the three pillars of observability, logging, metrics, and tracing, as they noodle on a solution. What? What is going on? No, 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 no. So many tickets. On the SOX application? I wonder what these users are complaining about. Whoa, just look at what these tickets say. Half of the page is gone? The app doesn't work at all? Is this right? But let me let me refresh the page. Oh, there are even more tickets now. Just my luck. I, I had to be on call when this app blew up. And it looks like the users are complaining about everything. Hello! Have you tried it turning it off and on again? Anyway, let me actually see what is happening with the application. I'm trying to open the app. But it is actually broken for me too. I wonder if it's not the users, maybe the developers messed up something? And they say, developers, 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 developers? Ah, I can't figure this out on my own. I need to talk to someone. I could interrupt Tommy's lunch or wake marching up. And I think I wake marching up. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, see. Jonathan is uh. calling me at this time? Seriously? This is better, but really, really, really important. Hey, dude. The Spring Sox application is down. I've had a lot of customer tickets in the last few minutes. Hey, dude, you had to wake me up for that? <sighs> Have you tried turning it off and on again? Yes, that was the first thing I did. Wonderful. You deployed again on a Friday, didn't you? I was hoping you would help me and not start a blame game. Yeah, yeah, let's see. Uh, we need to start somewhere. Um, let me SSH into the machine and see what's going on. Um, we need to find the application's log files. Uh, where do they actually keep their logs? Um, I'll start by looking at the usual folders. Uh, var, logs, uh, nope, no logs here. Let's maybe check opt socks shop logs. Oh, here they are. <laughs> and of course, these logs have already been rotated. I only see the last 10 minutes of logs. Rotated? So do you mean the app logged too much and it replaced the older log files? Yes, my friend. Looks like we'll have to use what we have. Let me open one of these files. <laughs> it gets even better. These logs are horrible. It looks like production logging is in debug mode. Of course it is. Look at this. 
one to three in the logs and sock not found exception are you serious well if tommy was here he would ask us to look at the what's the word oh, well, yeah, I, I mean yeah he would tell us what to do but look at this cool ascii art in the logs i mean i like their style ascii product on application start ascii scream on a stack trace they even threw in a bonus Mona Lisa. I mean, just look at the details on this rocket. Is it a three-stage rocket? These are developers with truly great taste. I, I don't think we will get anywhere. I'll just page Dummy and see if he can join us. Oh, hey, you both. Why the sad faces? What's up? The Spring Sucks application is really slow. We have so many trouble tickets. Okay, and um, what have you found so far? We found a sock not found exception in the logs. Okay, but that's a known issue. You see it right there in the logs, please ignore me. What else have you found? So we SSH'd into the machine. And then my friend Marcin found some really cool SK art. Do you really interrupt my lunch to talk about ASCII art? Wait a minute. Did you just say that you SSH into a production machine? Production? You shouldn't even have access there. Uh, I guess I'll have to take a look myself. Well, in these situations, I always think better to ask for forgiveness instead of permission. Because YOLO, am I right? Archon, I'll deal with you later. And isn't it 4 a.m. for you anyways? Let's just, let's just figure this out. See, now what you could have done, rather than looking at the logs on the machine in production, you should have looked at the logs in our central logging system. So let's take a look here. We look for recent error logs. Yep, there's a bunch here. Unable to fetch socks error in the shop UI service. So let's take the trace ID from one of those and see if we can find any other error logs in any of our other services. Maybe we can find the root cause that way. Yep, okay, so searching for the error logs with this trace ID, I'm seeing an IO exception in the catalog service. It's starting to look like this is a network problem between shop UI and catalog service, right? Yeah, right. But as we're troubleshooting any issue, you always want to take into the consideration the context and the impact. So we can see how big the issue really is, and if there are any other related problems. Since we're using Spring Boot, can we use micrometer metrics for that? Right, spot on. And we already have micrometer set up, so let's go visualize what we have there. All right, let me go to Tanzu Observability and check the dashboards. And when you're looking at the dashboards, you know, always make sure that you're using the same time frame as the error you saw. All these general parameters such as uh, uh, CPU, memory, uh, throughput, they are, they are looking okay, aren't they, Tommy? Yeah, 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 they're looking okay. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the service dashboard then. And it seems the shop UI service calls are uh, slow and there are some errors and we can see yeah, we can see the latency and the error rate. And from the logs, we saw that the catalog service was also impacted. So let's look at that in this dashboard too. Is it the database latency? That looks bad. Wow, look at that select query. It should not take that long. But I think we're gonna need some help because I have no idea about all these services. Let's see if Shivindri, our resident observability expert is available. Hey team. Good to see you, Martin, Jonathan, Tommy. What's happening? You caught me just before my dinner. Hey, Shivindri. Sorry to bother you at dinner time. Users are reporting issues with the SOX app. It's been slow and having errors. We see network-related exceptions in the logs, and latency metrics are really bad. But everything else seems completely fine. There's some issue between the shop UI and catalog service. What else do you think we could do, Shivindri? Okay, that's a good start. For the next step, I want to open up latency analysis to see what's going on. Let me go to the Tanso Observability homepage and now to App Status. This is what I like to call a bird's eye view of the system or the application map view. It looks like there are quite a few services that make up this application. 
Looks like 10 or more components. This is typical though. Yeah, and I, uh, I see in the legend here, uh, the ones marked in red, they are taking a long time to complete. My spidey sense tells me this is bad, yes, Shavindri? Absolutely, that is correct. I'll now click this dependency. The duration parameter is a large number. The latency does seem really high. Since the application has Spring Cloud Sleuth on the class path, we have distributed tracing. I get to those by clicking the Traces hyperlink, right here. If I remember correctly, a trace shows us how a request propagates from one microservice to the next in a distributed application, right? Full points, Jonathan. Okay, let me take one specific trace and see this distributed trace in Tanso observability. Oh, this circus with the exclamation mark? Oh, I know, I know. An exclamation mark means that the app is working better than the usual, isn't it? No, it means there might be something wrong with the latency. Let's order by longest first to see the traces with the worst latency. Okay, the shop UI is timing out on catalog service. And this leads us to the root cause of your latency. It seems the issue is specifically with the catalog select query as it takes a long time to complete and cause errors. Is it possible to click into it for more information? Yes, absolutely. Look here. This query has a huge limit. It takes a long time to return the results and the UI is timing out on catalog service. Oh wow, I haven't seen that issue before. That must be a new problem. Can you compare it to a trace that succeeded? Sure. Let's pick a successful trace. This one succeeded because the query had a small limit. It was fast, so there's no timeout. As a good practice, I suggest we add a sensible limit to the queries to avoid this. Wow, that was awesome. So did I understand correctly that the application status dashboard tell us which services look bad? And from there, we can list the traces and drill down to a single trace. So in the trace view, we can see which spans took long and also why. So it turned out that the database query was slow because the limit was huge in the select query. So the database was trying to return a lot of records instead of just a few ones. And that's why it is slow. So I guess it's easy to fix. We just need to check what happened with the limit. Yeah, this was great. I mean, I think it's much better than SSHing to production. Now, what if you found this problem before it became a problem? Let's add an alert to Tanso observability, specifically for the catalog service because we now know it gets slow due to the database query. You can do this in the application map view again. Just create an alert for the service here. If the duration is high enough, let's make sure the engineers are notified. Great, we already have an alert target group that notifies all three of you. Now the next time you will get a notification as soon as the catalog service is slow. Wow. You really saved the day. Thank you so much, Shavindri. And no wonder they call you the expert. I know. But just follow these steps and any Spring Boot app will work well with tons of observability. You will not need to keep people from getting their dinner or waking them up in the middle of the night. Speaking of which, Martian, thanks for joining, but please go back to sleep and stop SSHing into prod. And I'm gonna go warm up my noodles again. Enjoy the rest of your evening, Shavindri and Jonathan. I don't know about you all, but Spring 1 is on right now, so I might actually watch a few sessions. And knowing these Spring folks, they might just announce a new project, maybe called Spring Observability? Anyways, uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. 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 Thank you. Camera's rolling. Okay. Are we rolling? <laughs> Can you hear me now? Hello. I just dropped off soon. That's okay, right? I can't hear anyone else. No. No. No, 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 no. Really? 
ASCII are the rocket uh, uh, Very nice guys Oh, hi, we're back. Well, I had such a great time watching this group troubleshoot and ultimately solve the issue using Spring Boot, Micrometer, Spring Cloud Sleuth, and Tanzu Observability. Hopefully you caught some of the Easter eggs throughout. If you can believe it, we actually filmed this debugging session at the same time across three different continents and countries. And if you wanna see more of Yonatan and Marcin, you can see them both along with yesterday's fabulous MCs Cora and Josh on Tanzu.tv. And with that, day two of the Spring One main stage is in the books, but there's plenty more still to come. For starters, we've got five awesome content tracks you can surf through. And if you visit the social track, you'll learn how to make barista level coffee at home, craft origami, relax with yoga, and create incredible recipes with tater tots. Did you miss any of the breakout sessions or want to binge a whole track? All session recordings will be posted to the spring1.io on September 7th. And if you're itching for more conference goodness after Spring One wraps up today, don't worry. The first ever DevOps loop at VMworld is online October 4th and leads right into VMworld. It's going to be great. And that does it for main stage. We had a blast looking at the ways organizations are making it easier for developers to code without distractions. With that, Thank you again for tuning in and please enjoy the rest of spring one.